Okay, so here we go. Next to be built, the Ravel Special Edition 69 Chevy Nova SS. Neat machine. Now, if you've watched my videos from the very beginning, you'll recognize this. This has been sitting on my shelf for a while. I used this kit in my first video to sort of introduce what you might find inside of one of these kit boxes if you're um, new to the hobby. So now after all that time, <laughs> I am going to be building this machine. So let's take a look at what we have here. Now, something I find interesting right off the bat, this is rated skill level two. I don't put a whole lot of um, weight on these skill level ratings, not just from Revell, but from uh, any of these, these model makers, because really the, the complexity of the kit is what you want to put into it and the way that you build it. And here with this, we have 141 parts, which certainly implies a level of complexity, even with the two-in-one option for uh, building this up. So, enough about that. Let's get to the good stuff. Okay, so to start with, we have our nice... Ravel instruction booklet. Good stuff. We've seen this before. I like these because they tell you what all the parts actually are. So if you're building something and you're looking at a piece and you wonder, uh, what exactly is that? Well, you can find out. So that's always a neat thing. And the assembly looks to be pretty straightforward. What's nice is they clearly delineate between building the stock and building the race versions here for the motor. And then later on for the various other components, tires and wheels, uh, as they become apparent to get which version you want to build. And then at the end, we have these nice full color illustrations to show you where all the decals go. Uh, for both versions of the car and as you saw from those pictures decals are an important part especially for that custom racing version but regardless which one you want to do what's really nice is we have all the little marker lights insignias uh, for the car motor dashboard gauges and wheel uh hubcap uh covers i'm sorry galore we even have decals for those big slicks if you decide to go with those a couple of different license plates some nice endorsement decals to me these are always uh worth their weight in gold because you build something else like a, a dragster or you know like a real um stock performance car or something like that you know stocker gasser whatever the case may be, is there, you can never have too many of those endorsement decals. Depending on your paint scheme, what colors you want to have go together, uh, always good to have. So that is nice to see. We'll start with some clear parts, which as usual I will leave in the bag. But you can see we do have separate windows. There are, for the sides, we have the rear quarter and front quarter. The actual door window is left out, which is fine by me because I don't like to build my interiors closed in. And we have separate front and rear windows, headlights and whatnot. Uh, there is no clear red molding, so the taillights will have to be done with a, a Sharpie or a, a clear red color, but no big deal on that. But I do like the separate windows. I just think they look better in a final build. Now we have an assortment of tires. So we have our slicks, no name. That's what the decals are for. We have the stock tires, which have a nice tread pattern on them. Do have a center seam, but no big deal. That can be sanded down. And they do come on the old school way of doing tires all together on the tree. You just have to snip those off. We get a little bag of metal pins. That is, uh, I'm not sure when Ravel brought this uh, build design method in, but I actually really like this. I've done this on a few of their kits. This is how your 
wheels will end up being mounted to the uh, vehicle. You'll sandwich those pins and the wheels because they are metal, regular model cement will not adhere to them. And then you simply push fit them into their receivers for the front and the rear. So I like that. It's simple and it works well. Things I enjoy. Now here we have some different exhaust pipes here. And you'll notice there will be some redundancy on these parts because of the two in one way to build. Here we have some extra components for the rear suspension, the lift blocks to get that rear up to accommodate those slits. We have some different exhaust pipes here, some of the engine configuration parts, radiator hose. We have two hoods, our standard, our stock, and our scoop hood for the custom engine roll bar inside a little center console for the shifter that's nice we get our seats with pattern in them detailed seat backs all good stuff and continue on we have our rear differential we have some really nice molding on those rear leaf springs we have some fairly delicate parts here anti-sway bars things like that um, this looks interesting here that would be a little tricky probably to get that part free of those mold pins without breaking it so that will take some care that is definitely a job for the good old diagonals and we have our engine parts continuing block some of the stock parts now here i really enjoy this we have a nicely molded fan that doesn't have its blades going off in all sorts of odd directions they're actually evenly spaced around the center i don't know why uh some of the older kits in particular they just seem to have a real hard time molding fan blades on the uh, cooling fans with the blades evenly spaced they they seem to be off kilter but that one looks good here's a big plus two in my book separate door cards and you know, i've pointed this out before but i always enjoy pointing it out look at all the extra detail you can get on the molding of those door cards because they are not in a tub where you can't get the relief we have armrest cranks we have some really nice textured ribbing in there great relief lines for where the doors would be sitting in there that's really nice really nice uh, we have our pedals dashboard the uh, detail inside for the gauge not necessary because we get those nice decals but that's looking like good good piece of detail on there and we get some more muffler parts uh, for get a different exhaust option Firewall looks relatively basic, but then the Nova wasn't exactly a, a rocket science type of car. It was more of the uh, simpler muscle car type design. Big engine, relatively modest sized car. Go fast, you know. <laughs> Sounds like a good equation to me. <laughs> and we have some chrome. We have our grill, a separate bumper. Have some really nice molding for that grating on the rear bumper with the SS in there, front and back. Otherwise, relatively modest because it just wasn't that kind of a car to be decked out in chrome. We have one wheel option for stock wheels. Those are the vent inserts for the stock hood. We even get a chrome trim for the front of the hood which is pretty nice shifter and we get these custom wheels which are these look really nice <laughs> I like those uh, and then we get some more parts for the performance engine those carburetors and the uh, separate air cleaners and then of course we get the classic Nova body Whoosh. Just a neat, neat looking design. 
Now it comes in the box when you open it up. And this is your basic assembly method for probably, I don't know, 90 something percent of the car models that you will ever encounter <laughs> in the hobby <laughs> where we have a chassis pan an interior pan and then the body on top so let's take a look at each of these our chassis pan is beautifully molded on the bottom look at that all sorts of relief details for how the stamping of the floor pan that's good that is nice nice stuff excellent then we have our interior pan now what's neat here you notice this is stamped as the metal would be so if you really want to do an aggressive racing version you could leave the rear seat out and then just have that exposed uh you know for some of these uh, street racing machines they would strip down everything they could possibly get away with just to save weight for that little bit of extra power to weight ratio we have some nice molding for the inner fenders. Now underneath here, only that will be seen. The rest of this will be sitting on that chassis pan like so. See how we have lots of nice clear mounting holes. We do have here, just notice that in the light, the molding uh, for the model 1969 Nova SS. So and Ravel 2008 okay fairly recent kit so those of course can be sanded or scraped down if you want that to disappear so you have more of a realistic look underneath there which I will be doing <laughs> and then the body itself and this looks very nice I am liking this we have the Nova insignia molded on the side we also do get the decal for that those nice side vents the marker lights are molded there so you could paint those if you would prefer to do that rather than the decal i will probably do a little bit of both where i'll put an undercoat of paint and then put the decal on top and i'll make the color of the decal uh, have a nice rich depth to it we have clear moldings for the gaskets around the windows and we go check that out we even have an interior uh roof molding on there very nice obviously these are just ejector pins those will have to go so that's our machine this looks to be a rather nice kit i have a couple of these uh special edition Ravel kits and without taking them all off the shelf and opening them up I have to say, uh, if you're looking for a kit that will assemble well, give you some options on your build, such as the 2 and one with a race versus a stock, you know, you can always mix and match some of those parts to get a particular look that you want. I will be doing that with this, which I will explain in a little bit, but uh, these kits... The parts tend to be nicely detailed. The moldings are somewhat newer. They go together well. Uh, you do get a lot in your box for your money. So if you're looking for a car to build and you see one of these Ravel uh, special edition kits, um, I can already recommend it before <laughs> getting into the build for this one because you will get a nice kit for your building experience. Okay, so... I will do my usual and take a moment to say thank you for watching the video. Thank you uh, for your subscriptions. It uh, is always appreciated and certainly uh, keeps me going to, to share these builds and uh, hopefully guide you towards some really nice kits to build and uh, maybe learn a few things along the way. So, yes, as I said, uh, please do, if you have not already, uh, consider liking, subscribing, uh, sharing it with all your hobby friends. <laughs> okay, so I'll be right back in a moment because there's a little something I want to tell you that I'm going to do with this one. Alrighty. Okay, so I said that I had a little something special that I wanted to do with this kit. Our nice sh 
Chevy Nova SS. Now, this kit, as I had said earlier in the video, and obviously if you've been with the channel from the beginning, you know now this kit has been sitting with me for quite a while. I originally bought this kit, and you'll excuse what I'm about to do. This is not part of a uh, <laughs> shameless plug, but uh, this was the sixth book that I wrote and published, um, Oddities and Entities 2 Vessels. Uh, just ignore these blue tabs here. This is the copy I use when I've done uh, presentations for the book. But there are a couple of novellas in here for some um, <laughs> very strange people and strange things going on. But in one of the stories in here, which has become one of my... Uh, favorite pieces that I've done. It's about a, a bunch of uh, very strange uh, shape-shifting people, but they are car people to a certain degree. And the main character, his father, has an old Chevy Nova that he uses to cruise around in. And without getting too deep into author stuff, um, it does serve as a metaphor for certain elements of the story, but I had picked the Nova for the story because I liked the car and it fit for what I wanted to do. I described it in a pretty particular way, the way uh, the father had the car in the story. And when I saw this kit, I thought I could probably get really close to what I had described with this model. Now, it's not anything crazy, ornate, or fancy. He basically used this vehicle for holding up convenience stores and making a getaway at night. So the vehicle was a primer black, basically. So I'm going to be going with a black primer color for the body. Uh, the build will be somewhat monotone because of that. But... I think when it's done, it should it should look pretty neat. And one of the things I'm going to do, which I have not tried before, is I bought some AMT Custom and Competition wheels and tires. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use these wheels, although I strongly suspect I will because they look pretty cool. But we have these beautiful pad-printed Firestone wide ovals with a nice tread pattern and it has some more meat to the tire from the standard tires in the Revell kit. They're a little bit bigger so I may have to do a little trim work to get them to fit inside those fenders but I think in the final that's going to be looking pretty nice under there so we'll see how that goes as i've said in some videos with when you go outside the lines of the box so to speak i bought these tires when i went to my hobby shop i took this with me so i could size it up and make sure it was close so to minimize the amount of work i have to do on the body and the wheels, I figured as long as I have a solid center in the wheel, because these are through molded. Yeah, I'm definitely using these. These are really nice. Um, <laughs> I can still mount them to the wheel backs that come with the kit. And with that little bit of hollow in the back of the wheel, I can hide the mounting pin. So this should be able to work with what I want to do without doing all sorts of crazy modification. Like I said, I think the most I might need to do is hog out the fender wells a little bit just to give those wheels and tires a little more clearance since they are a little bigger. But that's the plan. So I'm going to start cleaning stuff up. And because I'm going with pretty much a, a black on black paint scheme, uh, the painting should be relatively straightforward on this. So, all that said, time to get started. Alrighty.
Okay, so we are back with color. Now, I had said that I would be doing a uh, simpler paint scheme with this because I was looking to build this as an inspiration from uh, a car I had described in one of my stories. But <laughs> uh, creativity being what it is, as I started looking at the parts and, and planning my painting, um, I was looking at these door cards here and I just couldn't help myself. So the Nova time accurate to its period, most likely uh, if you ran into one of these cars, it would just be a simple uh, black on black interior. And when I looked at the door cards, you know, they're so nicely detailed, I just couldn't resist. So I went in and I started detailing. Now as to choice of color, I, wanted to stay somewhat faithful to the idea of keeping it relatively um, understated. So I didn't want bright colors in here, but I definitely wanted contrasting colors. So I have used this gray on gray contrast before, and I was, uh, I've been happy with the result from that. So I figured, let me go with that again and uh, see how it works out. So uh, the lighter gray is basically just uh, Tamiya uh, a surface primer, very simple. The darker gray is a Model Masters uh, gunship gray. And then the top upholstery line I just did in semi-gloss black, which the you know vinyl that they used at that time uh, would have would have uh, represented and just to add a little something I did this red trim line here which when I built my uh, Ravel uh, the VW GTI Golf that interior was relatively simple as well but that car actually did have a red trim line in the interior to denote it as the GTI so I just thought that would be a nice trim accent to add in there and I feel that does make a nice separation between the gray and the black. Um, the seats just did the gray on gray with a black border to separate the two colors and very simple there. The dashboard I went with the semi-gloss again to carry over from the top of the interior trim so they will make something like that and the highlight here uh, because there's not a whole lot of detailing to do on that dashboard but these white face gauge decals uh, that come with the kit really nice I put those in there because again I was looking for a little bit of, of contrast to bring attention to things I am going with the shifter and I will talk about this chrome treatment in a minute and the uh, center console will also be going in there which also has some really nice uh, but very small gauge decals but they look good in there and just to show you how this all goes together it will all sit in this uh, black primer that I did for the um, interior pan which also goes into the uh, wheel wells. The body itself, I just have it laid out here. So we have the underside of the chassis pan, primer black, inside pan for the interior, and as I said, the uh, front wheel wells, primer black, and the body I did leave in the black primer that I had wanted to do. I will be using the decals for the marker lights because they look really nice but I wanted to do a uh, metallic silver paint backing for those decals so that they will be nice and bright once they go on the kit. Otherwise, the only detailing I did here, I went with a black Sharpie and just did around the uh, weather stripping where the windows will go in. Other than that, plain Jane. Now, when it's done, I do plan on going back and just doing a little dry brush technique to bring out the Nova emblems on the car. They do give you decals for that, but um, 
it should be relatively easy to just go in there and very carefully dry brush those in. So that is looking pretty neat. Speaking of dry brushing, just to show you uh, how tight a detailing you can do with that technique, this is the battery. I did it in blue, even though that's not really uh, color accurate, but I went with the dark blue because otherwise, uh, since the rest of the car is in this uh, black prime, uh, this detail would just be lost in there. But it did have molded in there the Delco name on the battery. So after I painted the blue, and being that this started as white plastic, uh, I dry brushed in the detail for the battery, the um, you know the cell tops and then I just took my hobby knife and scraped off the paint down to that raised uh, Delco I dry brushing here to pick up the detail on the radiator grill so there we go did make some mistakes yes but between the shroud and everything else this will be um, not all that visible so I'll leave that as is not to worry uh, started working on the engine paint just going to do a red block so that kind of sticks out against the black. We have our engine parts. I am not building the um, competition motor that you can do with the kit uh, because I do not want to use the scoop hood. I want the stock flat hood. So I will be using the uh, stock engine parts and not building. Uh, as, I, as I'm alluding to, not building a super zooped up motor, so uh, just doing some basic uh, contrasting metals here. And, you know, again, things maybe not 100% color accurate, but just to provide that little bit of contrast. Now, the interesting thing. So, <laughs> let's look at a chrome tree. And you're probably thinking right now, what happened to that chrome? Well, I'll tell you. So this is the chrome as it originally came in the kit. You can tell it is uh, very bright. And when I did the uh, kit review to start with the open kit, uh, I had said this is way brighter than I want to go for what I am looking to build. This is, I believe, yeah, this is the only piece I left in the original chrome. So. I wanted to uh, tone this down. So I came in with uh, some Tamiya Delcoat spray. I sprayed the rest of the chrome and it turned almost this odd, like whitish gray. It, it wasn't really what I was going after. Um, and I was kind of wondering what exactly I would do with that. So, which uh, <laughs> to point out a lesson, you know, it never hurts to do a sample spray, let's say on a piece of unused sprue, if you're unsure as to how uh, clear coats in particular may react with the undercoat that you have. It doesn't hurt to try something out. Um, obviously, I did not. I just jumped into a blind. The dull coat wound up being, like I said, this sort of whitish, silvery looking color. Uh, it is not reflective but as you can see it, it's very pale and I wasn't happy with that so while deciding what to do with that I took some of my uh, Tamiya panel liner and I went to detail these uh, valve covers here and lo and behold as I brushed that on the color character of the chrome and the dull coat there was some type of reaction there and it completely changed. So now I went from the super bright chrome to this very whitish looking chrome with the dull coat to now almost this like burnished blackish uh, type of chrome appearance, which I just thought would look perfect <laughs> with what I am trying to do here. And you can see that up against the body that's really what I wanted and as luck would have it <clears throat> that's the way it turned out so point being you know when you're working with your kits it never hurts to experiment and sometimes uh, the results of experiment 
can be a nice valuable uh, learning so a, a nice valuable lesson so here just by uh, dumb luck I, I found a technique for myself if I want a completely different type of chrome look now I know start with the original chrome spray it with uh, Tamiya dull coat and then just brush it all down with uh, Tamiya black panel liner and I will get this um, I guess it's it's almost like pewter the tone I, I am hoping the camera can capture all the, the gradations here but um, really happy with the way that came out <clears throat> I showed you how I did the wheels well after the wheels were all done I liked the way the other chrome looked so I popped the tires off and I did the same treatment for the wheels so now that will all match because I had originally left these in the, the bright chrome these are the aftermarket wheel and tires Oops. and when I put it up against the treated chrome that I did I, I, I didn't like that contrast made these look toy-ish let's say so uh, pop the tires off like I said and did the same treatment uh, spray of Tamiya dull coat clear dull and then the uh, black wash on top of it so that's where we're at gonna start putting this bad boy together and we'll see how that works out
All right, so here we go. It's the final build time for the Revell 69 Chevy Nova SS Special Edition. And there we go. So, I will start off by saying it's probably going to be a little hard to see. <laughs> uh, but over the course of the build, you know, I had mentioned in the beginning that I was going to do a vehicle uh, inspired somewhat by uh, a car I had described in one of my uh, short stories and one of my books. And here it is. Now, as I was going through, the uh, car I described in my writing was uh, somewhat simpler than this. It was basically, you know, black on black, my outlaw Nova, let's call it. But as I said, when I was talking about the painting, seeing the detail on the door cards in particular, I just couldn't, you know, let that go. I had to work with that. So went ahead, did some extra detail painting. Uh, as far as the, the kit itself, you know, it is built out of box. The only thing extra, obviously, uh, I talked about that quite a bit, are the tires and wheels. And I showed about the very uh, light modifications that were required to get them on the car. And now that they are on the build and the build is done, I think they came out really nice, which is to say nice for what I was looking for <laughs> in my build. And uh, that's a point I do want to talk about here because when you approach a build, you know, you should be building what you foresee in that build and what you want to get as an end product. I mentioned while I was talking about the interior detail painting, uh, no Chevy Nova is going to have an interior like that. And it is somewhat different than even what I thought for the fictional vehicle I was trying to uh, bring to life here in this build. But that's what I saw in the interior and that's what I wanted to do with it. So that's what I did. So same thing when you have a, a kit of your own, don't necessarily feel that you are obligated to do things a certain way because in history, the actual car looked a certain way, you know, um, use your creativity. And that's kind of the uh, point I was trying to get to here in my usual <laughs> random about tangential way. Uh, you know, this build having come from a, or been inspired by a story that I wrote was a um, act of creativity out of an act of creativity. So even forgetting the writing part, you know, when I sit down to do a build, it, it's always, I look at it and I go, well, what can I do with it? Not what do I need to do with it? And the need in terms of sitting there and figuring out, well, what was the actual color of an engine block on a, a 69 Nova and what were the available interiors? And, you know, there there is certainly a time and a place for that in the hobby. Uh, if you want to venture into that, <laughs> by all means, go ahead be for, go forth and be merry. You know, that that is how creatively you are now choosing to approach the build. I come from <laughs> a, a work environment uh, in, in a medical lab that is uh, beyond hyper-regulated. So I won't get into the politics of that, but just to say that in my day-to-day -day working life, everything is specified and regulated and down to a T and has to be done a certain way and blah, blah, blah. So when I sit down to do this, you know what, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. <laughs> and that's for me, part of the enjoyment is the freedom of interpreting the build as I choose. And again, vectoring back, since this is a vehicle that I was trying to capture what I had described in the story this is the way I chose to express it. So lecture for the day. Let's talk about uh, the final outcome of the build itself. Now, paint scheme, very simple. I just did the primer black on these uh, 
old school Detroit muscle cars, you know, sometimes uh, a simple butch paint scheme just looks mean. <laughs> the, these vehicles certainly uh, captured a, a certain mechanical brawn in their in their design, in the, the essence of their of their aesthetic. And um, in this case, you know, a simple black primer, I, I think certainly captured that. And then as far as the detail color, just a little bit of red on the uh, suspension arms there, the insides of the wheels, that's just working, you know, um, contrast of primary colors, black and red, you know, they're both striking colors. So putting the two of them together, there's a definite visual punch, even though it is a very simplistic uh, representation with just... You know, there's no pinstripes, decals, or anything. Just a little bit of red and a whole lot of black. Boom. That that makes a statement. Uh, the only real detailing I did on the body, the Nova logo, the SS, as we come around the side. Again, the Nova logo here. Uh, those I just dry brushed on because it is raised mold detail for the lettering. Uh, it was easy to capture that. Again, with the SS here the uh, blue Chevy bow tie again. Uh, the kit does, in fact, uh, if you're not interested in doing that, the kit does give you decals on that very nice decal sheet for your logos, for your lights. I did red marker over metallic silver paint for the rear indicator. The front indicator, I did go with the decal on top of a metallic silver backing that I painted on the body, which I had showed. The reason I chose for the decal up front is the front, the indicator, I'm sorry, is split in two zones. There is the indicator light and the front is a 350 badge for the displacement of the engine. Um, that is not a mold detail that could be captured. So I went with the decal. And that's basically it. You know, I talked about how I did the chrome, the treatment for that, which was a bit of a surprise. That was a learning experience in itself. So that was very cool because I love when things like that just organically happen while you're building and, and you get to learn something new. Uh, the only other decal on there is this little uh, racing logo, which tiny as it is, I, I could not read it with my wonderful eyesight, but I believe that's one of the uh, drag racing uh, logos. But anyway, uh, again, that kind of feeds into what I tried to pull out of the story I wrote. So I stuck that on there and that's it. Otherwise, the car is plain Jane, as you can see, and that's exactly what I wanted to have. And I think it looks really nice as it is. Now, part of the benefit of that is I have all these wonderful decals left over. So those are definitely going to go in the uh, spare parts box. And um, I will have those whenever I need them for another build. So there's a little bonus right there. Now, to get back to the tires and wheels, you know, I wanted with this car also to have a little bit of a lift in the total ride height, but still have it sit level. Um, I'm lucky in the, the town where I live during uh, the periods of nicer weather during the year, Thursday nights at the local uh, shopping plaza, they have impromptu uh, car shows and people just bring their, their vehicles, whatever they may be, and park them there for, for people to check out. And I love it because <laughs> uh, people come by with Model Ts to uh, military trucks. Of course, there's always, you know, a whole slew of old school muscle cars there and you know part of when i was planning this build and this modification to put in the aftermarket wheel and tire was considering what kind of a ride height i wanted and i've noticed on uh, some of those muscle cars that i see uh, that the owners they do a, a very light modification where the car is basically stock you know the paint job and everything the cars are pristine but it's not some crazy paint job but they do have a little bit of lift in the ride and they beef up the tires that they have on there and i just think those look 
so cool <laughs> because it's not some over the top in your face thing and um you know at the same time though you look at it and it's it's really eye catching and just that little bit of extra becomes a lot of extra so there you go now in terms of building the kit uh as i had said in the beginning these uh this is a bit of a newer kit and these uh, ravel um special edition kits tend to go together quite well as this one did i didn't have any issue with uh fit of parts except for one the battery <laughs> up front which i showed during the build i had I had to pop it out twice because the way it's keyed to fit on that inner fender first it, it jammed up on the uh, hood support across the front so i put it in a little bit different way than the back of the light housing on the front grill hit it again i pulled it out and i actually hogged out a little bit of the back of the battery so i could put it in a little bit closer into the wheel well and it is actually just press fitted in there right now when i take off the hood we'll see it in there you know it, it's a space of a millimeter or two here or there but it did make the difference and um, now it's in there so that's a, a very minor thing underneath i also showed the uh attachment of the uh suspension brackets there the red uh, suspension arms that it wasn't quite clear in the instructions as to which uh, you know little notch should be lining up with the uh, shock absorber um, but to be fair those are add-on parts to you know they come in the kit but they are add-on parts to build the custom version of the car they are not part of the original stock build and design of the kit so big deal you know a little fiddling and as i was building it it became very clear where they should go and how they should mount and that was that and i mentioned at one other point uh, part numbers were switched onto uh, pieces so again no big deal test fitting always the savior that shows that right away uh, a little red marker to do the taillights because all the parts came in um, clear plastic so those look great and then coming around i used uh, turn signal amber for the indicator lights down on the front bumper and here they come so you can see those there and uh that's pretty much it so pop off the hood and we'll take a little bit of a closer look at our machine here we have that really nice engine detail in there now i had mentioned that i was going to uh, do some ignition wires on there but i felt it was looking good exactly as it was and i did not feel the need to go any further with it and left it at that you know it's a nice clean underbody here nice suspension detail again having just a few parts to build that rear end but having them as separate parts uh, does make a difference as always front suspension is relatively simple but you can see the little elements i did to lift that those little collars barely visible especially with the flat black on them and on camera i'm sure they are absolutely invisible at this point <laughs> and the interior as i showed in the build and there you go the car does come with parts for hood hinges and i was considering using them in the build but when it came time to attach them i couldn't find them <laughs> so i actually went back and watched the original uh, segment i did for this build where i was looking through the parts to see which sprue they were on and i i think while i was painting uh that section of sprue was part of the uh, flat black primer and when i trimmed that sprue to separate some pieces for other colors i, I must have accidentally uh, thrown my hinges away but that's okay the hood sits on there just fine as it is and typically i do prefer to have the hood where i can just take the hood off and get a full-on view into that engine compartment and that's it so there we go the outlaw nova it sat on my shelf uh i bought this kit before i even started the channel so <laughs> this kit has been uh waiting for me for uh, almost three years and i am so happy 
after all that time looking at it and thinking how exactly I wanted to do it and that it came out just fine. So I'll let it take another little spin and that will wrap this one up and then I will come back hopefully with another build. Uh, there were, I know, a number of delays in getting this one out uh, between activities with my authors group. I uh, went away on vacation and um, I have went to upgrade my computer hard drive and as luck would have it the old drive decided to fail as I was upgrading to the new drive so I lost everything and had to start all over again that was all sorts of fun but now finally <laughs> back to it and there it is so thank you for watching as always please do subscribe hit the alarm bell like share all that good YouTube stuff but most importantly enjoy your hobby okay and that's that